Well, uh, join me in prayer as we go into our worship through understanding time, our message time here at the church. Lord, thank you for the responsibility of stewardship and thank you for the responsibility to truly manage what you have provided. We ask for forgiveness as sometimes we think we're bigger than we really are. We ask for understanding as we grow through your principles and through your wisdoms. We kneel before your truth now and bow before your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. It is wonderful to be with you uh, this morning. Uh, as you know, Sherry and I had to take care of some responsibilities way back in California there, and uh, we're absolutely thrilled to be back. And let me say this. Let me start off. A big thank you. Where did John go? But John's back there. A big thank you to Pastor John, Pastor Matt, and the entire membership at the church for taking care of things uh, as uh, Sherry and I uh, were taking care of some responsibilities uh, with um, with. Uh, where we're going next in uh, our new normal, if you will. You guys know what I mean by new normal? Sure you do. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And it's, uh, it is truly wonderful to be back this morning. Uh, we're going to begin our message in the book of Luke this morning. The book of Luke, Luke 12, 15. Now, as you're turning to Luke 12, let me turn to our Facebook audience. And as always, we're absolutely thrilled that you're able to leverage technology to join us. But we do ask everybody who is viewing via Facebook Live just to click on that share button to let all your family know, your friends know, your enemies know about our live feed here so that uh, you can share uh, this experience with them. Again, thank you for tuning in and truly uh, being with us this morning. Now today, let me get my throat, throat) those bells, uh, my knees are hurting a little bit. (laughs) Today I want to talk to you about a subject that inflicts every one of us, coveting. Who here has never coveted someone or something? Now don't raise your hands because if you do, you're lying. All of us at one time or another have struggled with this particular sin in our life. This week we are uncovering the 32nd command out of the 49 commands that we're uncovering through this year's theme, Believe Again. The command, the 32nd command for this week is beware of, this is a tough word to say, beware of covetousness. Beware of coveting, if you will. Today, I want to focus on this particular command through a message that I've created and I have titled, Captain, Adjust Your Course. Captain, Adjust Your Course. So read with me Luke 12, verse 15, where we find this particular command. Here... Our commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ, is speaking. And he says, and he said, that's Jesus to them, disciples, if you're a disciple of Christ, raise your hand. And he said unto them, take heed. Another way we can put this is take note. If I want to be relevant today, uh, this is also saying, go ahead and tattoo on your sleeves, your tattoo sleeves there, this command. He said, take heed and beware of covetedness. For a man's life consisteth, excuse me, this King James Version, not in the abundance of things which he possess. (laughs) The command is do not covet. And we know this. This is actually represented in the Old Testament One of the Ten Commandments. Do not covet is the command this morning. This morning, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's have fun this morning. With the very little power that I have this morning, very little power, 
I would like to promote each and every one of you to the rank of admiral in the United States Navy. So what we need to do is raise your left hand because I have no power with the right hand. Raise your left hand and repeat after me. Repeat after me. After me. Because you repeat it after me, you are now an admiral in the United States Navy and will be referred to from this point on for the next 22 to 25 minutes. Give me a little bit of grace. As captain. Are you with me? Okay, Captain. Now, if there is one command or principle in this life that leads to the practice of, let me say this, contentment, happiness, fulfillment, it is this command or principle known as do not covet. Or to put it another way, Quit desiring other people's stuff. Who's with me? You know, other people's stuff like their relationships. Other people's friends. Another person's wealth. Another person's title or, or uh, let's say, position. Another person's fame or reputation. I know I'm missing something here. Oh, I know. Somebody else's life. Jesus, our commander and chief captain, said, do not covet. Do you understand, captain? I'm not convinced. Do you understand, captain? Time for a little training. The Cambridge Dictionary shares that coveting is the wanting or desiring to have something too much, especially something that belongs to someone else. Are you with me? Now understand, there is a difference between greed and covet. We need to understand that because I understand this in certain translations and where we were already, they refer to greed. The two are different. We need to understand this if we're going to apply this command properly. Now, even though these words are similar in meaning, understand that greed is the desire to gather and to hold on to stuff or wealth or hoarding by any means available. That's greed. And when I think of greed, I think of that Disney movie, Dory. Young people, you're with me, right? Where they have those characters, those seagulls, that all they do is fly around and land and say, mine, 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 mine. It drives you absolutely bonkers. Mine. That's greed. Some of you guys like that. Greed means too much desire for wealth. On the other hand, or whereas, coveting means to desire someone else's wealth, somebody else's looks, somebody else's whatever. Fill in the blank for you. Now, God himself said both in the Old and New Testament, uh, in the Bible, do not covet. Now, most of us understand this, we know it, but for some reason, we have a hard time living it out, don't we? Living it out to the point where we are truly practicing, everybody say practicing, practicing contentment, you know, being happy people, or should I say captain? We must know and understand this. Please hear this this morning, that contentment, that happiness, fulfillment is a discipline or yet better yet a habit of obeying the command, do not covet. It's not the only one, but it's the main one after be born again. 
Do not covet and be aware of it in your mind. That means that your, con- your conscious is always aware of that threat in your life. And understand that it's not something that just falls on you. You must work at it. Who's with me this morning? You've got to work at it. God did his part. He provided everything you need. Now, instead of blaming God, what you need to do is to really work it. Now, captain, if you would sit down with, let's say, other captains, we'll call them Christians, they would probably say the same thing you would say about coveting. They would say that to covet is completely wrong or evil, right? Right? Yes. However, if you had the ability to monitor their thoughts and better yet, their desires, you would see that their thoughts and their actions would say something completely different. Most go around jealous Envious and desiring other people's powers, their looks, their social status, uh, and their wealth. And they are more concerned about attaining those things rather than truly attaining a life that is truthful, a truthful, that's good, that's in harmony, that's truly goodness in this life. That the great commander or God has designed all of us on this planet to live now and for all eternity. Quit facing the darkness and turn into the light. Amen? Amen. Let me ask you this question, Captain. If you're a captain, raise your hand. Are you God or not? Now, on the surface... This question seems a bit silly. Because we know how to answer this question. In fact, many of us just answered the question with how we know how to answer it. And most people know how to answer it. And of course they're going to say, of course I'm not God. Why do we say that? Because we know... If we answer this question incorrectly with our words, we have medication, straight jackets, locked hospital units to help you deal with the reality that you are not God. To say we are God is to be crazy. So most of us know how to answer this question with our words. However, if you were to follow you around, you would see that most of your actions uh, would scream otherwise. Your actions say, of course I'm God, look at my world. Your actions speak louder than your words, Captain Most people live like they are the center of the universe. And that everything and everyone exists to serve them and their purposes and their causes and their actions. They put all of their efforts into building their own little kingdom. Whether it be their household, whether it be their job, their career, their company, their relationships, or their interest. They feel as if it all revolves around them and that even the laws and the commands of God or Jesus' instructions or His commands that we're going over should rotate around them. Captain, do you believe the commands of God should revolve around you? Yes or no? I hope not. Life, let me say this, Captain, life is going to get a little frustrating because most believe they are the center of the universe. And everything else should adjust to their course 
and their way of living. For instance, many will hear this message today without adjusting their course to the commander-in-chief's Jesus Christ's command, beware of coveting. I say it that way because I can't say the other one. So let me say this, Captain. If you want to stay on course and true to your commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ, then I suggest, Captain, adjust your course. One night, this Navy warship was heading through the fog when a distant, faint light appeared directly in their heading. As the ship continued, the light got brighter and brighter and brighter, and the captain walked to the helm to assess the situation. About that time, a voice came over the radio and said, Attention, calling the vessel traveling 18 knots on a 220 heading, adjust your course 30 degrees immediately. The captain defensively, aggressively, and with authority. Got on the radio and said, this is the vessel on the 220 heading. You adjust your course 30 degrees. Negative, Captain. You adjust your course. I am an admiral in the United States, I almost said Air Force Navy. (laughs) Who am I speaking to? I am an ensign in the U.S. Coast Guard. The captain, now furious with this low-ranking person, said, I suggest you adjust your course now, the captain said. No, sir, I suggest that you adjust your course. Beside himself now, the captain almost yelling, We are a U.S. Navy warship. You adjust. Silence. Everything went silent before the low-ranking Coast Guard person could say, We are a lighthouse. Listen, folks, you can continue to covet power, fame, uh, wealth, and you can get all the social status that you think you need to have and even be greedy with it and attain all of it and become the highest ranking person in the U.S. Navy, but know some things are just bigger than you are. Are you with me? When we think we are the bigger ship or uh, we are better, uh, more favored, can I use that word? That's been thrown around a lot. Than everybody else, we think we're, we're more favored than everybody else and think we can beat the light. And we somehow believe that wherever we are, the other people must adjust themselves and they should get out of the way and they should adjust to us. But understand, if you continue in your narcissistic ways, sooner or later, you will crash into the lighthouse and will be silenced. Captain, adjust your course. In its worst form, thinking you are a bigger ship, let's say, or believe somehow you or other people are more important because of position, wealth, fame, status, whatever. Understand this. If this is you, understand this is the ultimate sickness. In today's understanding, rather than being known as what God named it, coveting, it's known as narcissism. Narcissism and coveting are the same animal. And it's not hard to spot these narcissistic people out in the crowd. Especially in a crowd that we experience today, not today, today, but in our culture today, of false prophets, frauds, 
and hypocrites. You know, captains, the one who hears the message but will not apply it. Let's be honest this morning. None of us like these traits in a person, and it is immature at its best. Self-centeredness is not admirable. And isn't it time to reflect the light of the commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ? Isn't it time to get out of you, Captain, and begin being the light of the world? Okay, Captain, that's enough of that. So let me give you, that's enough training, let me give you something that you can pin on your chest and take home. Like that analogy, Matt? That was for you, man. (laughs) If you expect to experience contentment, happiness, fulfillment as a person, you must stop. Everybody say stop. Comparing yourself to others. Quit desiring other people's lives and stuff and truly appreciate and enjoy the life God gave you. Now, this isn't hard to do, folks. And quit telling, you, quit telling yourself that it is hard. It is not hard to do. All you have to do is stop comparing yourself to other people's possessions, other people's, uh, stop comparing yourself to other people's careers, stop comparing yourself to other marriages, stop comparing yourself with other people's appearances, stop comparing yourself with experiences, stop comparing yourself to other people's, let's just say, relationships altogether. Stop comparing yourself to another person's giftedness, their abilities, and their talents. That's all you have to do is stop comparing. Content, please hear this, if you don't walk away with anything else. Content, happy, and fulfilled people do not compare themselves. The Bible over and 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 over, mine, mine, sorry, and over again, teaches that we are not meant to compare ourselves to others. God doesn't do it, so we shouldn't do it either. Galatians 6, 4 through 5 says this. Listen to this. This is not my message now. This is God's word. Each One should test their neighbor's actions. Did I I I misinterpret that? Man, I hate when I do that. Each one should test their, what does it say? Own actions. Then they can take, now listen, everybody says, oh, pride is evil. Here's one place that God gives you permission to use pride. Here it is. Then they can take pride that's in themselves. That's how God designed you. That's in your temperament. That's how, that's your values. That's your purpose. That's your direction in life. And they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves. There it is, Captain, to someone else. And anybody outside of you is someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Boy, I got to tattoo this on my heart. Listen, folks, too many of us feel something other than well done, good, and faithful servant. Instead of feeling that life is good and being grateful for the talents and the strengths that God gave you before you were even born, working hard and acknowledging you did your very best with what God is giving you, your thoughts say something else altogether. Jesus said, beware of coveting. Or the other word is covetousness. It's your first time here, you're like, this guy's nuts. If we're going to be brutally honest this morning, we all struggle with this sin, don't we? And no one is exempt. No one. We understand that. But here's the wonderful thing about our struggle. There is a way, 
capital W here, to get on the right heading of God and enjoy the journey as we travel towards God's horizon. The heading is simple. Do not covet. If we would just obey this simple command and be constantly aware in our minds and in our hearts of the damage that coveting does produce, I mean, we're always awake to that danger, then we have a guarantee way to never falling silent in this life. Now, my closing thoughts are this. Take a good look. Observe yourself, your life. Ask yourself, are my desires lined up with God's way or are they aligned with someone else's wealth or power or fame or status? And if your desires are just slightly, I'm talking 1% off course, forgive yourself. But tell yourself this, Captain, adjust your course. Amen?